The People's Commission launched their non-compliance with CSIS campaign backed by 68 community groups, including CUTV, at the CSN building on Sunday. Je m'appelle Marie-Ève Lamy, je suis porte-parole du euh, réseau de la Commission populaire. Euh, donc le déroulement euh, d'aujourd'hui, je vais d'abord introduire un peu euh, le, euh, la campagne de notre collaboration avec le CRS, expliquer un peu euh, les raisons qui nous ont poussé à lancer cette campagne. As it is now, with the uh, actual policy of the uh, government, of the Harper government, you never know what they can do, because they tend to consider you as uh, as a, t a threat to national security, so they say, because you organize in order to have more right to be recognized as you should be as a Canadian citizen or not still yet a Canadian citizen. So if you work with migrants workers, if you work with uh, uh, social justice, if you work with people uh, with Aborigines, you are with by association, you are considered as someone who can be a threat to their way of thinking. To Domin itself traces its um, experience with CSIS harassment back to the spring of 2010, uh, namely to the lead up um, towards the G20 protests in Toronto. It was at this time that we began receiving reports that collective members were being visited by CSIS agents. Um, sometimes these agents would inquire as to the involvement of other collective members in organizing around the G20. Sometimes they would be soliciting character appraisals of their comrades, often insinuating uh, that they had a propensity for committing violent acts. Uh, William Ray for uh, Concordia University Television. What do uh, you and your panelists think the effects of the increased CSIS surveillance has been on social organizing? And do you expect CSIS to have a response to your initiative? And if so, what, what do you think the response would be? Generally, it creates a climate of fear and insecurity. And so people stop wanting to get involved in community organizing of any kind because they feel that it, it will attract unnecessary uh, attention. So everything goes quiet. It creates a, it creates a chilly climate. And uh, it, it kind of has a, has a, rip, a ripple effect. And therefore, uh, for example, in, in my case, I'm speaking, there are many people who would like to be here from my community, but, but who won't come forward. So you don't, you don't speak out for your rights generally. It creates fear, intimidation. Uh, we're we're going to start reaching out immediately, like we have been doing. I think uh, this press conference and taking the campaign very public will create a um, snowball effect where a lot of groups will just realize, wow, all these other groups have endorsed, we should get on board. It will have the effect of, of uh, providing popular education to people about CSIS and why this campaign is going on. And even the groups that might not be ready to endorse, at least they'll have a conversation internally about what is our relationship to security agencies like CSIS? Why should we work with them or not work with them? So um, that'll be something that I think will snowball and will be um, one outcome is that people who are often victimized um, by CSIS will, will be less victimized because there'll be a whole community of people who, who they can get support from. It will help normalize the idea that you don't have to feel isolated and in fear, that you can have a certain level of empowerment um, when dealing with CSIS, even when you're obliged to talk to them, which some people are when they're going through the immigration process. My name is Deborah Grossim and I'm with the People's Commission at the CSN building reportings for CUTV News.